Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 7th, 2017. I almost said 2016. This will be the beginning of my season 11. Can you believe that? 11 years. Uh, I think at least 8 or 9 of those years have been on YouTube, and then the three beginning years were on another place that no longer exists. So anyway, let's get to the stories. The Consumer Electronics Show is going on this weekend, and if you want to check up on it, they've got some interesting stuff. Nothing really new and innovative, but just some progressive changes in some of the gadgets. They have a, a LG LED, LE, no, what is it, OLED, OLED screen that is so thin, I think it's maybe like two millimeters or less thin. It's like a piece of paper attached to the wall. In fact, it has to be fed with a ribbon cable out the bottom to another uh, control box underneath, but it's a 65-inch TV. They think the price may be around $10,000, but um, just fantastic clarity and quality. And uh, you can actually, it's not meant to be really flexed that much, but you could actually, um, had they had a demonstration where you could take a corner of it and peel it off the wall just a little bit to kind of show how thin it was and everything. Um, the other gadget they had there too was a thing called hover cam or hover. Uh, let's see what's on the hover camera passport. It's uh, not quite ready for prime time. I'll give you the link to this too. As usual, all the links to everything will be down below. Um, the CES stuff you can just do CES 2017 and uh, on YouTube, and you'll see. Um, Mostly it'll be by CNET, but if you do CES 2017 uh, Space and Gadget, they have a lot of these eight-hour live streams, but they're saved as videos. Uh, I don't really care for watching the CES live streams because a lot of times you'll have 10, 15 minutes straight of talking heads, and I don't really, I want to look at the gadgets. So now with them posted as videos, you can skip ahead. But anyway, um, on Tested, the channel called Tested, which is... Uh, one of Adam Sam, uh, Adam Savage from uh, Mythbusters is one of his channels. Uh, one of the people that works with him tested this um, hover camera, and it's still this first generation model he tested. It's not quite ready for prime time, but it's a, a great idea because it's all in a little cage type of deal. When you fold it up, it's no long, no bigger than the size of a, a VHS tape. Uh, you turn it on basically and just fold it and it let go of it and it hovers in place, follows you around, tracks your face, but doesn't doesn't do those quite as excellent as they could. I mean, it doesn't maybe what you would call an adequate job, but not a real good job. You're going to have to film a lot of footage to uh, to get good footage out of it. So, But you, but you can read his test. I'll, I'll give you the link to the, the test of it. But I think it's neat, neat, too, because it's so small and lightweight, you don't need to register it either. And if they can give it a few more features in the next generation, um, the price is just like 599 bucks, so it's about the same price as all the other different drones and stuff like that. I can see it really, uh, if they do a few improvements, I can really see it making something uh, quite good. Um, this one is from gizmodo.com. Incredible new image shows Earth and Moon from Mars. Now, let me see, did somebody send this one in? Um, this was from, no, this was not, this was just one that I found. This was, um, NASA took, they, they had to calibrate the uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter camera. So for doing calibration, they wanted to look at something other than Mars. Well, the closest thing other than Mars is the Earth. So they decided to swing it over and take a picture of uh, the Earth and the Moon. And I'll put the picture up right here now. But uh, it's interesting, too. If you look at the picture, it looks like the Moon is relatively close to the Earth. But that's just because the Moon is getting close to becoming directly behind the Earth. Um, on scale, actually, the Moon would be way farther apart from the Earth than it is on this, but it just looks this way because of perspective. But still cool, if you look at the uh, Earth itself, you can see in the center that brown spot is Australia, and the bright white spot on the bottom and a little bit off to the left is Antarctica. So if you get a chance, uh, check that out. And then they've got a, if you scroll down on the page, they've got a little uh, strip uh, photograph showing you the perspective of what the actual distances and sizes would be if they were in a perfect perspective of the Earth and the Moon, sizes and distance-wise. Um, this next one's from uh, my friend Bob H, and this is from the Telegraph Science. Spectacular collision of suns will create new star in night sky in 2022. This is going to be the first time they were able to actually predict when it's going to happen. They've seen it happen before, and I guess about once every 10 years, somewhere in the sky with a good enough telescope, you can see two, two suns. Um, that are binary systems. They they eventually either move away from each other and one reaches escape velocity, or the other option is one falls into the other and consumes the other, or they combine, whatever you want to call it. Well, that creates a lot of energy and a lot of bright light. So it says here, at the beginning of the 3rd century, civil war raged in Britain as the Roman Emperor Septimus Severus sought to quell unrest in the north, but unknown to the fighting cohorts 
and Chaldinian tribes high above their heads, two stars were coming together in a huge cataclysmic explosion. Now, 1800 years later, the light from that collision will finally arrive on Earth, creating a new star in the night sky dubbed the Boom Star, an incredible rare event which is usually only spotted through telescopes. Before their meeting, the two stars were too dim to be seen by the naked eye, but in 2022, the newly formed Red Nova will burn so brightly in the constellation Cygnus that everyone will be able to see it. So it's going to be one of the brightest stars in the sky. Even people like me that live close to downtown Chicago will be able to see it. Um, even in our light polluted skies and stuff like that, it should burn, burn bright enough. And it appears here, if you look at Cygnus and Pisces in the sky, it's uh, right in between them and a little bit off to the right. I'll post a picture of that up here too so you can kind of see. But uh, yeah, if you get a chance, look at that and we've got some time to prepare and stuff. Might be uh, something kind of neat to uh, check out. First time we've actually, because of the fact in the past, they looked at some patterns, patterns of different binary stars and stuff like that and how they were circling and what changed before they went into Nova. So this way they were able to actually use that and uh, make a prediction and hopefully the prediction is accurate and we do end up again see it five years five years from now when we will finally know. And last up, something if you get a chance you want to look at it, uh, right now it's in the evening time. This is the Southwest Florida Eagle Cam and you can still see a, a really good view of this eagle on a nest because of the fact they're using infrared light. So even though it looks pretty bright, the eagle itself uh, the eagle herself, she can't see the, the light. I don't think. I don't think uh, birds see in the infrared. At least I'm not. Well, I'm not really sure. But um, the last I heard before I looked tonight was there was one egg that still wasn't hatched, and I don't see that in the nest. So either it hatched, or the nestling was pushed off, or something like that. But if you just want something kind of interesting to look at, it's called Southwest Florida Eagle Cam, and you, it also has a link down below it. View more and chat live with experts at SW. FLFloridaEagleCam.com so you can click on that link and I guess there's a chat in there and everything and you can uh, talk with some experts if they're on to answer your questions and stuff like that but um, I thought it would be interesting too because a lot of people have been sharing links to it on Facebook so if you're on Facebook you've probably seen it already before but if you're not there is a link to be able to see the uh, the mother eagle raising some babies so anyway thank you everybody that sent material in this week I really appreciate it I've got some material for next week coming up too that should be pretty interesting and uh, take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.